Shalom, Shalom, Yisrael. It's your brother, Benaya Ben Israel, coming to you with a very special presentation. In this presentation, we will take a look at the prophets, the apostles, and the saints on the transatlantic slave ships. That's right, you heard me. We will take a look at the prophets, the apostles, and the saints on the transatlantic slave ships. Now, let's begin by first reading about the blood of the saints. And we can find that in Revelations chapter 18, verse 21, which reads, And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of the harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Now notice that the blood of the prophets and the saints will be found in Babylon in the last days. So with that said, let's find the blood of the prophets and the saints in Babylon. Now to do this, we're going to perform a very simple exercise. We will simply search the transatlantic slave trade database which contains the indigenous names of slaves on slave ships. And we will search this database of indigenous slave names for prophets, apostles, and saints. Now, feel free to follow along using your very own Bible and a web browser. And if you look in the description section, you should be able to find a link to the transatlantic slave trade database provided by emory university and others where you can search along with us so without further ado let's get started let's start with the book of genesis the first book of the bible and let's start with our father abraham and on your screen you'll see the strong's concordance for the entry for abraham and what we will do is simply search the transatlantic slave trade database of the slaves that were actually on the ships for Abraham. And surely enough, we find Abraham, a slave by the name of Abraham, on the ships, on the transatlantic slave ships. Now, as we go through this exercise, you gotta wonder why would we find the people of the Bible on the transatlantic slave ships? Something to think about. Now, let's keep going. Now, Abraham was married to Sarah, right? And you can see Sarah on your screen. That's the Strong's Concordance of Sarah. Now, let's search the transatlantic slave trade of those slaves that were stacked like sardines in a can and sent across to the New World Let's check the transatlantic slave trade for slaves by the name of Sarah. And surely enough, we find many slaves by the name of Sarah. And as we keep moving along, we'll look at the name Isaac. So you know about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So as we look at the name Isaac, you'll see it on the screen. And as we look at the transatlantic slave trade database, for the name Isaac and we find Isaac 
Why are we finding these Israelites, these Hebrews, these, these children of Shem on the transatlantic slave trade database? If we are Hamites, or if we are Egyptians, or if we are Mohammedans, or Muslims, instead, why are we finding the names of people that are in the Bible? Well, let's keep reading. So the next name that we'll look up is Jacob or Jacob. You'll see it there on your screen. He's the son of Isaac. And in the transatlantic slave trade database, you'll see Jacob or Jacob. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this database is that it is a database that is composed of phonetically spelled names. So you'll find multiple different spellings of the name phonetically. So as we keep moving on, so let's go on to our next name. And we'll look up Judah or Yehuda, as you see on your screen. And sure enough, when we look at the transatlantic slave trade database, we find a Judah. Judah was actually on the transatlantic slave trade database. So Judah had a brother. His name was Levi. After all, Judah was part of the southern kingdom. And the southern kingdom was composed of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So you'll see Levi there on your screen. Now surely Levi wouldn't be on the transatlantic slave ships, would he? Yes, he is. So looking at the transatlantic slave trade database, you'll see Levi. Why would we find slaves named Levi on the transatlantic slave trade database? And Benjamin, so Benjamin was the brother of Levi and surely enough, when we take a look at the transatlantic slave trade database, we find a Benjamin phonetically spelled was on the slave ships. So Benjamin was shackled, feet and hands, stacked like sardines in a can and shipped across to the new world. Benjamin, what was Benjamin doing on the transatlantic slave ships? And of course, Moses. And you see Moshe, that's his name. Was Moses on the transatlantic slave ships? Yes, Moshe was on the transatlantic slave ships. Again, when we look at the transatlantic slave trade database, we're finding people of the Bible. We're finding people of the book. And Daniel, so we know all should be familiar with the book of Daniel or the story of Daniel, right? So when we look in the transatlantic slave ships, we find a female, females with the name Daniel on the transatlantic slave ships, named after the people of the Bible. And as we keep going, David, so we all know about King David. So surely King David or someone by the name after King David wasn't on the transatlantic slave ships. And it's really David or Dawid which is the phonetic spelling and we actually find both we find both david and Dawi on the transatlantic slave ships now you'll start to notice this pattern so that over and over again we will find people of the bible in the transatlantic slave trade database i'll repeat over and over again you'll find people of the bible on the transatlantic slave trade database indigenous names not names that they were given these are their indigenous names now as we keep going let's look at the prophet elijah or elijah is how it's spelled and sure enough we find the phonetic name elijah in the transatlantic slave ships and we're just going to go through a few of these until we hit home the fact that the slaves that were on the transatlantic slave ships many of them had names that can be found in the Bible in your very own Bible you can check it yourself so now that we found a lie let's go on to Isaiah so you have a whole book in your Bible called the book of Isaiah and when we look for Isaiah on the transatlantic slave trade on the ships we find slaves called Isaiah. 
Then again, this is why we say that the children of Israel has gone into captivity as foretold by the prophets and as foretold by Yahshua HaMashiach. He foretold that Israel, that the children of, of Judah, would go into captivity into all the nations upon the earth. I repeat that the children of Judah would go into captivity into all the nations upon the earth. And just as the Hamashiach foretold, we see the people of the book on the transatlantic slave, slave ships. All right. Well, let's keep going. Let's go through a, a few more of these names. So Hosea or Hosea. So you'll see that Hosea or Hosea or Oshea or Hosea was on the transatlantic slave ships. As well as Malachi. In your Bible, you have a book of Malachi. And sure enough, we find the phonetic name Malachi on the transatlantic slave ships. So Malachi was on the slave ships. And again, we have Zechariah. So you have Zechariah in your Bible. And likewise, we have Zechariah on the transatlantic slave ships. Now, for this next section, let's take a pause here and we'll, we're going to read a, a quick quote by John Ogilvy. And John Ogilvy tells us a, an important thing here where he says that, you know, many Jews are scattered over this region. You know, he's talking about the uh, west coast of Africa. And this is the area from where the slaves were taken that were part of the transatlantic slave trade. And John Ogilvy, he says right out that many Jews are scattered, also are scattered over this region. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed. And of course, after reading that there were slaves on the slave ships by the name of Abraham, we can see why that there would be people boasting themselves of Abraham's seed. After all, they are naming themselves Abraham. <laughs> and then it goes on to say, it says, inhabiting both sides of the river nigger. Others are Asian strangers who fled thither either from the desolation of Jerusalem by, by Vespasian, or from Judea, wasted and depopulated by the Romans, Persians, Sarsians. So the most important takeaway here so far is that John Ogilvy is telling us that the Jews were on the west coast of Africa and that they came to the west coast of Africa in different migrations. And you can see it here even in the next sentence where it says, or else such as came out of Europe. Well, John Ogilvy is saying that there were some Jews that came from Europe to the west coast of Africa. Why? It says, whence they were banished. And it says, look, listen, it says, out of parts of Italy in the year 1342, out of Spain in the year 1462, out of the Low Countries in 1350, out of France in 1403. Listen, it says, out of England in 1422. So the main takeaway here is that John Ogilvy is saying that there were also Jews that came from Europe. I repeat, came from Europe to the West Coast of Africa. So with that being said, let's take a look at the or let's search the transatlantic slave trade database for some names that we might find in Europe. For example, you've heard about the Apostle Paul in the New Testament. Well, let's take a look at the transatlantic slave trade database and see if there's anyone named after the Apostle Paul that was shackled hand and foot and stuffed like sardines in a can on these transatlantic slave ships. And sure enough, we see Paul on the transatlantic slave trade slave ships. We also see Mark. You have a book of Mark in your Bible, don't you? Well, what's Mark doing on the transatlantic slave ships? Likewise, you see Luke. Don't you have a, a book of Luke in your Bible? Why is Luke in the transatlantic slave trade database? And last but not least, how about John? <laughs> Why is John on the transatlantic slave ships? All right. Well, hopefully you can see that 
the slaves that were on the transatlantic slave ships, some were named after the people of the Bible. And this was their indigenous names. These were their indigenous names. And you may wonder why would people enslave the children of Israel? And for that, we can find the answer in Revelations chapter 12, uh, verse 17, where it talks about the dragon. And it says the dragon, who in the earlier verses is referred to as the devil. And so it says the dragon was wroth with the woman. And the woman in this verse is, is uh, referred to as Israel. So the dragon was, was angry with Israel. And then it says, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, of her children, right? Which keep the commandments of the Most High, Old Testament, and have the testimony of Yahshua Hamashiach, New Testament. So in summary, the dragon or the devil is angry with Israel and goes to make war with her children that keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Christ. So you can see in this one verse that it is the devil that has a problem with the commandments of the Most High. I repeat, it is the devil that has problems with those that keep the commandments of the Most High Yah. All right. Well, again, in summary, what we've learned so far is that the Transatlantic Slave Trade Database contains the names of Israelites as well as prophets and the saints in the database. I repeat, the database contains the names of the prophets and the apostles and the saints in the Transatlantic Slave Trade Database. In some of the names that we don't see, we don't see Egyptian names, we don't see Indian names, we don't see Muslim names. And if we don't see Egyptian names or Muslim names, that then that means that Egyptians didn't get on the slave ships. If we don't see Muslim names, then that tells us that the Muslims did get on the slave ships. Or if we don't see Japanese names, that tells us that Japanese didn't get on the slave ships, right? But what we do see, we do see the names of Israelites, and we do see the names of the prophets and the apostles and the saints, which tells us that the Israelites got on the transatlantic slave ships. Well, hopefully you've learned a lot. And again, be sure to check the description section for the links to the transatlantic slave trade database. I'll also include a link to Emory University's video about the transatlantic slave trade database, just to give you additional information as to how they built the database. Well, Israel, thanks again for taking the time to watch the video and hope you have a great day and shalom.